but I like your story. And, and you know, when I had the opportunity to talk to him, to you, Mark, and you said, oh, my story is boring. <laughs> I, I, I disagree. I, I think disagree. you're, see, even Aaliyah at 16 years old disagrees. Your story has so much in it that talks about how when you do things right and you stay out of trouble and you just work the process and let the process kind of take its course, right. you end up being successful. I found my life, every time I did things the way I wanted to do them, when I wanted to do them, I take three steps back to where the goal I wanted to get to was over here. I'm taking three steps back. I, I didn't understand, but it seems like you had an understanding of just staying in track, staying committed, because you then uh, started coaching varsity ba uh, varsity basketball. Well, not varsity, but uh, what happened was um, I did play varsity at Montebello, and I still know the, knew the coach as well, and we kept in touch. And one day I got a phone call, and he... Well, I was already married at the time, though, but he, he called me and said, Hey, Mark, I'm looking for a, I need a JV basketball coach. Mm, JV, I'm sorry. So, yeah, no, no problem. Hey, I wish it, no, well, that was my goal. Coming out of college, mm -hmm. I wanted to coach high school basketball varsity. Oh, okay. And, yeah, and I, and, uh, but, you know, things just changed as in the course of the year or the years. Uh, when I got to Cal State LA, I was also, and Leah doesn't know this, I was also studying to be a firefighter. So I was in wow. fire at night. I go firefighting classes, mm -hmm. and but during the day I'm at, at school at Cal State, and then in between I'm working for the city of uh, Los Angeles. So when when I started coaching JV basketball, I still thought, hey, maybe you know maybe I'm still going to do this, but it didn't work out that way, which, mm -hmm. which is okay because when I did my internship from Cal State, I did an internship at the Salesian Boys and Girls Club in East LA, and after I did a, uh, my intern for six months, the director there offered me a position and I took it and that's wow. how I really got started with the boys and girls clubs well look how like I said God set everything up <laughs> but you were being prepared there was something in your heart that I see that you wanted to give back you wanted to coach yes. you wanted to work with kids yes I did most people when it comes to kids they shy away from that that's a lot <laughs> they do they'll be doctors but not pediatricians mm. they'll be you know teachers but not do high school so, but you had a heart for working with children. I wanted to touch on that. Tell me a little bit about where, when do you feel that you find, had that, that heart to serve? Well, you know, I think it started when I was, when I was a, uh, a young child, maybe about 10, 11, 12, 13. I lived by the park. Remember I told you that. Mm -hmm. um, I'd go to the park and then be involved in the park and recreation department. And a good friend of mine, his name is Mark Corbett. He was my first true mentor. And at the time, and, I, and he and I are still best friends to this day. But, you know, I saw what he did with us. And coached us and talked to us and taught us things. And as, as the years went on, I just said, hey, it's, it's kind of fun working with kids. You know, I like to I like to teach. And I'm an athlete. I want to teach sports. So that, that's that's what I did. How interesting. How interesting how everything was being set up. Uh, I, getting to know your story, you took a part-time job also tutoring. Well, what happened was I when I was teaching fourth grade at the uh, All Souls Elementary School in Alhambra, uh, I think you know teaching doesn't pay very well. <laughs> yeah, <they're> very <laughs> underpaid in this country. Very underpaid. So what My I had, so what I did, and I was about to segue. Your your mom is also a teacher. My father is a professor, um, but I think in this country we have it upside down. The first thing we want to take out when times get troubled and we our finances come out of education, where we should be pouring in the most in education. I believe in organizations like this that are educating and setting foundations. For our kids, so I I, I, I agree. I concur. Yeah, not making enough money teaching. I, I tutored at night. I started my own little business, and I advertised, and I had about eight students. I'd go to their home with the parents in front of me, and I'd help them with their homework. How I, you know, I got a little money for that. So again, still the the, the heart of serving, the heart of giving back, mm -hmm. the heart of providing a, a one on one with these kids. That's amazing. You finish your degree and had the opportunity to go to East LA. Tell us about. East Los Angeles and the program there. Well, I was at Salesian Boys and Girls Club, and that's where I learned all the my my traits of being a good program leader, being a leader, being a mentor. Mm -hmm. Anyway, at that time too, I was also a big brother, big brother's greater Los Angeles. So I, wow. I I had a little boy for three years until his mother finally remarried, and we had to stop. But you know that was that was volunteer work, and I loved doing that with the uh, the young child. Um, let's see. After that, well, time, I wanted to talk mm -hmm. about the program there. How was the program there? Having your first opportunity, your first look at what the Boys and Girls Club of Salesian had to offer. Tell us a little bit yeah, about well, that. Well, Salesian's uh, in City Terrace area. It's kind of a rough area, mm -hmm. a lot of gangs. Um, but I I was able to had some great leadership, a great staff. So I learned a lot from the people there. And then you just learn a lot from the kids. 
you know, they're 98% Hispanic. There are a few of them gang members that, that I dealt with. But you know what? Kids are kids. They're all the same. I got to know those kids. It was great. I, I saw some great kids. And if I have time later, I'll talk about some of the great kids I still work with today that are. Wow. And, uh, but uh, from then on, I moved out. I, I left and went to teach. And then I went to the Boys and Girls of La Habra in 1991, my, wow, first, my first round. Well, I got to ask you, Leo, how do, how do you feel about the Boys and Girls Club? What are your, um, your experiences with that? Uh, he was, he, his experience at the Boys and Girls Club was first at Salida and yours was the one in La Habra. Mm -hmm. What were your experiences? Like, how, what, do you, what can you tell me about the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra? Well, I spent a lot of time there. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of time there. And actually, it's, it's where I met my best friends. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, I met, I'm, of course, I had, like, best friends at school, but it's different. Um, it's different when you spend the morning and all afternoon with somebody mm -hmm. yeah. and all day with somebody. <laughs> Basically, like, my best friend was, went to not my school, but she went to my sister's school. And, um, but we became best friends for, because of the Boys and Girls Club, and we 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 had another best friend, and we were like a little trio, and there it was go. a lot of fun, and they had so many things for us to do there. And mm -hmm. at the time, they had this um, DJ game, and it was called Crack and DJ. <laughs> and we I used remember to, that one. Yeah, we used to play Crack and DJ all the time and we were we were like five okay so we couldn't reach the top so i'd be on one panel my friend would be in the middle going like doo, 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 and the other friend would be on the other panel like we could, and i remember they also had the education center so we'd all go and we'd do our homework and then we would go play crack and dj and then we'd play with our littles pet shops and then we'd eat and then we'd play with the littles pet shops even more which were like animal barbie dolls yes, yes. and so um it was just like I was I basically lived there. It was like a home to me, you know, because my mom, and at the time was in administration, and my other grandma was working as well, and my brother my brother went to school, so, and so basically I I just I you lived grew there. Up there. You yeah. had to grow up there. And um, I mean it was a great place to grow up. I had an amazing time. Um, I feel every time I walk in there, it's like nostalgic to me because I've. I've been there my whole life, and mm -hmm. I remember for one performance they did a slideshow um, at the regional conference, or not not the regional conference at the auction. They did a slideshow, and it was pictures of me at the Boys and Girls Club, and I forgot how little I was <laughs> when I went there. Because you know, I'm just thinking now in the moment, like, oh yeah, I go to the Boys and Girls right. Club, but I looked back and I was like three feet tall <laughs> going to the Boys and Girls Club, and I it just was a huge part of my life, and just looking back. And I, I saw people that, I mean, that didn't go there anymore, but I just remembered all these friends that I had made and um, just like. Well, that's amazing because you talk about high school and how it was very cliquish and you had a few friends. The Boys and Girls Club was not like that. It was not like that. No. And that's what I wanted to talk about, the Boys and Girls, Girls Clubs of La Habra. How did it make you feel going back to the Boys and Girls Clubs of La Habra? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I, I worked there from 1991 to 96, mm -hmm. and then I left. I went to become an executive director for the Boys and Girls Club of East Los Angeles from 96 to 2000. And you had much success there. And we, I had great success there. When I got there, our budget was 180000 and that club was in trouble. Uh, and I wasn't the savior, believe me. Uh, but I was able to uh, recruit some good board community leaders, board members, and some good staff. And when I left that club in 2000... Our budget was up to five hundred thousand, so we did very well. Wow, we did very well, and wow. so so the director at the La Habra Club at the time, he had, had uh, we had kept in touch. He was one of my mentors, and he said, "Hey, Mark, our club's expanding in La Habra. Would you be willing to come back as my associate? Because he planned on retiring in a couple of years." So I thought about it. and I said, "Yes, I'll come back. I want to do that." And uh, he didn't retire when I hoped, but <laughs> but he retired in two thousand ten, and and I took over as the executive in two thousand ten. Well, that's amazing. Congratulations, first of all, for taking over 2010, the Boys Club of La Habra, because mm -hmm. I had an opportunity. Oh, we're gonna, we'll hit on that a little later. Okay. But let's talk about what is the Boys and Girls Club organization? What is the mission of the club? Well, the mission is, and I like to read it because I always hate to miss it, but it's, it's to help youth of all backgrounds, especially those who need us most, uh, to develop the qualities needed to become responsible citizens and leaders. That's the mission of most boys and girls clubs, but that's La Habra's definitely, but all boys and girls clubs are very similar. Well, I got to say, just from what's in front of me, Aaliyah, it looks like you guys did your job, especially with her. She's She has such a heart to give back to the community. She has such a heart to be 
proactive, yes. which I think the Boys and Girls Club and your mom instilled that in her. And I think that's a great foundation for any child, especially in today's day and age. Yes. So I got to ask you, Mark, what would you say somebody out there listening and viewing who's interested or is curious about the Boys and Girls Club? Well, I'm biased. The Boys and Girls Club, it's, it's been my life for 34 years. Uh, I've been about 12 as an executive. I've also worked at the YMCA's, which are great programs. I've worked for uh, the, Boys, the Boy Scouts, and the Girl Scouts are great programs. Uh, Parks and Rec are great programs, but th there's not a bigger impact in the Boys and Girls Clubs. Uh, uh, there's, there are 15 Boys and Girls Clubs in Orange County. We have about uh, a little over 20 in L.A. County. And there are over 2,000 Boys and Girls organizations in the United States, uh, wow. about 3,000 clubhouses. So Boys and Girls makes a great impact on your, on your children. And, you know, we, we're not perfect, but we do the best we can. And we've, we've seen many, many kids strive and become, you know, great citizens. And I, it's so great. The best and the rewarding thing is they all, a lot of them do come back to see me and just thank me. And I say, there's no need to thank me. You know, that's... That's what I do, <laughs> but they still do. So I really appreciate all those kids that come back. Oh, amen to that. Amen to that. We're going to take a quick commercial break, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back, Mark's going to tell us all about the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra specifically, and Aliyah on some of those stories from the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra. This is Joy in my house. We're going to come back right back with Aliyah Molden as my guest co-host and Mark Chavitz, Executive Director of the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra. I want you to stay tuned. We're going to come right back. We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Hello, I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. What up though? This is your man, he called the Wolf. Invite you to join me every first Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the Wolf's Den at LATalkLive.com. Now join me as I spotlight some of the hottest talent of all genres of music. So don't forget to tune in every first Friday, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, exclusively on LATalkLive.com and the AmericaTalkLive.com broadcast network. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Yiddick. Ow! Hello, I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Joy in my house, joy in my house, joy. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery, a reality show where nothing is left unsaid, and no one who shares is insignificant. <laughs> I was 
I threw her off. I'm glad I didn't have to memorize it. <laughs> Aliyah, welcome back to the show Thank as my you. guest co-host and our in-studio guest, Mark Chavez, Thank the you. director, of, executive director of the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra. Now, before we went to commercial break, we we're talking about what the Boys and Girls Clubs are all about, and you've done a great job with the Leah. I think you partnering up with the Leah's mom, you guys had an opportunity to really mold the youth. You have that opportunity. As a martial arts instructor, I've been teaching for 22 years. I've been training for who knows how long. We're privileged to be able to work with kids and to see them grow and become productive citizens in our community, and Aaliyah's done that. I had the opportunity to run into one of my clients and I was telling you off camera, uh, he sent me this really nice message because I started his son in the martial arts program in Fullerton. He's continued on and is still training years after I'm not there anymore. And it was impactful to see him and to, to see his, his gratefulness. And I can see that in Aaliyah. I can see her gratefulness when she talked about getting her award. She, her eyes got watery <laughs> because you guys are really validating and setting a foundation for the kids. So let's talk about what the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra is all about. All righty. Well, we, we service boys and girls ages 5 through 18. Uh, they have many opportunities to come to the club and participate in athletics, social recreation. We have a teen program, arts and crafts. Our educational center with, with houses about 45 computers for any child. Um, we have excursions. During the summer, we go to camping. Uh, we give out, uh, we serve lunch, free lunch and free snacks. So there's a lot, there's a lot for them. There's a lot of opportunity uh, for the kids to get involved. Well, I wanted to ask you, having had the opportunity to look at the facility, <clears throat> to go and, and get a tour of the facility, first of all, the facility from the outside looks small to me, yeah. but it is not. It is a big facility. It's huge. And you have a lot of little uh, projects inside the <laughs> facility. Let's talk about those little projects. Well, sure. Well, uh, first of all, our, our facility is 32,000 square feet. So when you look at it from the street, you just see like our gymnasium. But once you get into that parking lot, it just keeps going all the way down. Right. So it's it's huge. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's that because of our board of directors. Uh, they raised big money for us. They, they helped me raise all the money to run all the programs. As a matter of fact, that we back in, uh, in October, we had our annual auction. It was our I think it was our well, 40 something auction. Mm -hmm. uh, but we did we're well, we're very well this year. We did well over 100,000 net. So that, you know, that helps us wow. quite a bit. And that's I that's sing there. She did sing there. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, and she, I watched the auction and she, I pretended that I was like <laughs> part of it, but I really wasn't. <laughs> but what a what a great opportunity. You know, what a great opportunity. Yeah, to, I'm, I, I'm glad you came to through to see. I'm glad you came through to see. You know, we were starting basketball season, so we had a lot of basketball programs going on the night practices and things and, and just everything else taking place in, at the same time. But even just something uh, uh, not as simple because a uh, kitchen a kitchen repair is not <laughs> as simple, but I got to see your state-of-the-art kitchen. Yes. It's really nice. It was immaculate. It's beautiful. It, you know, we it was a dream for many years. That 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 kitchen was ugly before. It was just like embarrassed to go in there, and I I, I couldn't stand you it. See, Leah remembers. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we were able to raise some money. Uh, we got some money through the city of La Habra, a CDBG grant. Uh, we had some private foundations to help us, but this this kitchen ended up costing one hundred twenty thousand dollars. But it's not just a kitchen. We it's a training kitchen. We're teaching kids how to cook, and you know we're teaching them you know either math skills from. Uh, you know, in order, pardon me, for baking, baking. Yeah, and baking. measuring, just everything, and and it, it's just it's great. So we have an instructor that teaches uh, basic skills and fundamentals of cooking, and again, just another foundation, another building block in somebody's youth that's going to assist them long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, teachers are very underpaid, very underprivileged. Uh, very underpaid and very underappreciated in this country, I believe. They, sure. they pour in so, so much into the kids. And what we get back, I think, as, as teachers or as educators is is to see them do well. So having that kitchen there that might have cost 120000 mm -hmm. can actually prepare somebody for the rest of their lives. Yes, definitely. So 120000 or 100 whatever is such a small amount when you look at the big picture. Right. You're also working on another project in the the in your facility in La Habra, in the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra. I got to see some of them, but mm -hmm. one of them that you're working on is a studio as well. Correct, a recording studio. A yes. recording studio. We did get some money, and 
I have to admit, you know, the staff has been talking about this for a couple of years, but I think after Elia's performance, and we're all inspired. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. You know, people say, hey, what about that? And I said, well, okay, let's look into it. So we do. We, we have some money now for a recording studio. So we're going to start uh, building that probably, uh, constructing that probably uh, during the summer, maybe right after summer. Mm -hmm. But the money's there. I'm excited. And it's it's, it's going to be really neat. Yeah. Well, again, another amazing opportunity for people to go, and especially the youth to go, and give some of their talents. Yeah. Not knowing that Alita, uh, 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 Alia had this talent at obviously five years old. You don't know that. Right. You, how could you have known that? But as you see them grow up and they get in the studio, some of these talents will shine. Some of these talents will grow. I mean, I can't imagine if you had the studio back then mm. when Alia was <laughs> younger growing up. She already had a platinum single already. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> But it. again, what what an what an amazing uh, facility, and tell us a little bit more more about some of the other programs you have, the other facilities because you have a pottery room. I mean, you had uh, tell us about that. I mean, the the, the our main facility yes. or our main facility. Yeah, we. I mean, there's so much to do. We do have arts, crafts, and pottery, but I, I want to tell you too that we we um, we have a grant with the school district, and it's called ACES After School Education Safety Program, and we not an only do we run our main site with about 200 kids a day coming to the building. We have nine after-school sites at school at elementary schools. Wow. And that's a great. So we're not only are we serving 200 kids a day in, in our main unit, the Big Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. but at the school sites after school, there's an additional 600 a day we service. So there's, there's seven to 800 kids a day get service from us somehow. That is amazing. It's great. In the city of La Habra. And La Habra is not a big city. La Habra is not a big city. There's only like 60, maybe 60,000 people 60. there. Uh, small community. It's tight knit. Everybody knows everybody there. I'm, I, you know, I'm from. I live in Chino Hills, but uh, you know, most of my <laughs> time, <laughs> most of my time is in La Habra. And you know, and I, I know, I know a lot of people. Mm -hmm. it, and they're all good people. We have a lot of great nonprofits there. Everybody does good work. We collaborate. Uh, very proud of that city. That's amazing. Well, I got to ask you, Leah. <clears throat> what did you take away from the Boys and Girls Club? Even you're still a part of them, and you're still doing stuff for them. But what did you take away that that is significant that you can tell our audience and viewers that would be Important for them, especially as younger kids, that, that your target demographic, the people that you speak to, what would you say you took away from the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra? Um, I pretty much did everything that they had there. <laughs> <laughs> I did arts and class, arts and crafts. I did pottery. I, they had a cooking class. I took the cooking class. <laughs> made a lot of rice crispy treats. <laughs> in, the old, in the old kitchen. Yeah, in the old kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Um, I took a cooking class. Um, I was terrible at dodgeball, but I still played dodgeball. <laughs> I was horrific at it. I would just hide behind other people, but it was fun, you know, because everybody was like, dodgeball, and everybody ran to the gym. So I was like, I want to be a part of this. <laughs> so I tried. Um, I was a foosball champion. <laughs> wow. I was a foosball champ. I worked really hard. Eight-year-old me was, like, <laughs> practicing all day to win foosball. Um I did everything. They had a music room. I would go into the music room. They're, they're turning the music room into a recording studio. Mm -hmm. So right now it's like drum sets and guitars and um, like... Um, piano. Piano, yeah. And they're turning that into the recording studio. But when I was there, it was a music room. And so I would go in there and I'd sing because one of the staff members could play the guitar. So we'd go in there and we'd all do like a wow. singing circle. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, I would do my homework and <laughs> go to the education center. Um and I would just do everything. Like, I remember every year Santa would come and they'd have this huge, like, get together. And, wow. Yeah. And um, we'd, we'd all wait in line. And I was horrified because I was like, oh my God, what if Santa knows that one thing I did on the 14th? <laughs> every child got a toy. Yeah. Every, every, every child gets a every toy. Every child got a toy. Yeah. And um, we went to Senor Campos, which is an, which is a, a local restaurant owned by um, a small, it's like a small business. It's small family a, yeah. business. Yeah. yeah. And um, we used to go there and we'd meet Santa. I have a Polaroid <laughs> of me and my best friend wow. when we were five years old. <laughs> we still have it sitting yeah. on Santa's lap. Like That's amazing. When, when I was five and it was through the Boys and Girls Club and um, just we would have Easter egg hunts on like during if like, you know, during that time of year mm. and just everything like that you could possibly want to do it was there and during the summer they had like the worldwide day of play and um wow. it was well, well thank god you remember all the programs because i don't remember <laughs> i remember all of them if i'm like a living boys and girls club pamphlet if you want to know what goes on i know <laughs> excellent but again just an opportunity for you to see what you're really doing on one individual life i can't imagine sure. 
two hundred people that you facilitate at your at your main building, and then the eight seven seven eight hundred others that lives you touch yes. have this are gonna feel the same thing. That is an amazing. You should be very proud of we the are. boys and girls clubs of La Habra. Boys and girls make a great impact. It's 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 a great they organization. Do. I'm I'm so happy. I've been doing this for thirty four years. I gotta say, every time Aliyah's mom Martha tells me you need to have this person on the show, <laughs> she has not missed a bullseye. Bullseye because Thanks, these, Martha. these are the organizations that I want to give exposure <laughs> to that the show's about. You guys are doing such amazing work, such amazing work, and impacting such amazing kids that it's important that we come alongside you. It's important that we support organizations like this, not only with our time and with our prayers, but also financially. If somebody wanted to come alongside the Boys and Girls Club because you are a nonprofit, or how does that work? Yeah, we are a nonprofit. You're a nonprofit. Yes. So a lot of this a lot of this fundraising for these programs, for people like Aaliyah mm -hmm. to be able to attend these organizations are supported somehow. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we, we need, like this year we need to raise $1.8 million, wow. and we're mm -hmm. going to do that. Uh, wow. I'm already working on next year's budget, which is going to be a little over $1.9 million, but all that wow. money goes back into the kids. Sure, we need to pay the staff and all that, but... Mm -hmm. All the staff are, are are working with the kids, making an impact, and all these great services. Mm -hmm. You know, we just opened up another school school site. I didn't get to mention it to you. There's another site. It's called El Portel Elementary School, and the superintendent came to me this past summer and said, "We have no program at El Portel Elementary School. What can you do?" So we we opened up February 5th. We opened up a new site and serve more kids at another wow. elementary school. That is amazing. So. Now, if people want to come alongside, our audience and viewers come alongside and support the organization. How can we do that? How, where can we go to to donate financially to to be a part of the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra? Well, I'm the director of the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra, so I certainly want people to uh, support us. <laughs> 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 so, uh, yeah, just go to our website, uh, ourchildrensfuture.org, uh, or you can give me a call at the Boys and Girls Club, 562-691-2413. Uh, and we, we have a lot of programs, a lot of, uh, events to raise money for the club. Uh, we're doing our golf tournament coming up uh, in on March 26th is our annual golf tournament. And as I mentioned earlier, our, our auction takes place in October. But there's a lot of things that, that we have to do to raise money. So if you're interested in helping us, you know, give us a call. Come down to the facility, give you a tour, check us out. I want all our listeners and viewers to come alongside the Boys and Girls Club of La Habra. Obviously, they've made this amazing girl set a good foundation, a good position for her to now give back if you want your kids to do this if you want to be a part of this a part of somebody's life like this i want you to link up with them they have a boys and girls club of la habra facebook page i want you to like the facebook page become a fan and you'll receive all the lineups of all the events that they're doing how you can be a part of it there is a dot org it's our children's future dot org very well uh, uh worded um <laughs> and there's also boys and girls club dot org it's bgca.org. I want you to find out more information. Come alongside amazing organizations like this and support them. They, we, we need to support you. These are the organizations that we need to be a part of, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of us give very easily to our Starbucks monthly. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine the budgets for our Starbucks. Mm -hmm. But we need to come alongside organizations like this because it is our future. Very well said ourchildrensfuture.org. I want you to find out. They have a Facebook fan page, Boys and Girls Club of La Habra. Like the fan page, and then you'll receive up-to-date lines of what's going on. The show is coming to a close, Mark, and excuse me, and we'd like to ask this of all of our guests. What does joy in my house mean to you in today's day and age? The joy that you have in your house in the midst of the struggles, in the midst of the challenges, but also in the midst of the successes. Well, uh, in, in my home, I, I of course, I have a loving home. I, I've got a wonderful wife, Jackie, and... Um, I have two wonderful boys, 19-year-old and a 23-year-old. My 23-year-old Jacob graduated two years ago from California State. I'm sorry, he's gonna kill me for saying that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> University of California at Santa Barbara. Oh, Santa Barbara. And yeah. he's uh, he has a biology degree, and he he stayed in Santa Barbara wow. to live, and he's got a great job with the county of Santa Barbara. And my younger son, 19, he goes to Chafee Community College. He went there to play baseball. Unfortunately, things happened. He tore up his quad. So he pretty much said he had to retire. <laughs> I, it killed me. But he's finishing up school there, and he's going he's gonna to be transferring either to Cal Poly Pomona or San Francisco State. He's trying to make up his mind on there. But a loving home, I, and I, I, family is important to me, and I, I really love to see you know families stick together. 
no matter what the circumstances, you know, just keep the love in the, in the, in the house. Amen to that. I got to ask you, Aaliyah, coming on the show, first of all, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and your mom, Martha. Uh, what does joy in my house mean to you in today's day and age? Um, thank you. And um, I think it means, well, my house is very joyous. My grandma is the light of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and she is just the most energetic, happy person I have ever met. She sings, she dances all the time. And my mom sings not so well <laughs> <laughs> and dances around and we all just um we all just like spending time with each other which i think is like um and me and my mom spend a lot of time together even though she's working um because i'm i work a lot so she comes with me on set and she mm -hmm. um we spend a lot of time together we we eat together every day and i think it's just I think that's like my source of joy, just hang, um, being with my mom and being with my grandma and my brother and my sisters and my nieces. And <laughs> oh, well, amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. Well, I want to thank Mark for coming on the show, Aaliyah for being my guest co-host. This is thank Joy so in the House, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to catch us live every Sunday at noon here on www.latalklive.com with life-changing stories and talent that will inspire you. You guys have a blessed day. Thank you for tuning in to LA Talk Live and the Talk Live Broadcast Network, original reality radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Stay tuned. <laughs>